Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to all our listeners uh, to another edition of our weekly podcast with three shots of espresso. Um, I thought I'll drive for this evening since I was late last week and could not make it uh, with my brothers uh, Sidi Anwar Jatam and Mulana Zakaria Matiani. Uh, we're looking forward to this week's discussion, but before we get into the topic and we're going to ask our brother Anwar to do that, just to sort of frame it fast, let's get a check in with each one of our brothers to see how they're doing. Uh, maybe I'll start because um, we did speak about it or mentioned it. Yes, last week um, we were fortunate enough, by the grace of God, to witness God's creation in its most pristine, uh, uh, you know, uh, I would say pristine view uh, from the otter trail alhamdulillah all praise belongs to allah for that opportunity and one that really is worth talking about for days on end and um, you know all i can say is if anyone is intending to do it be prepared have a lot of grit and determination uh, you don't need to be extremely fit you can be moderate moderately fit but if you're going to be carrying a huge backpack then you're going to have a problem so if you're going to be carrying a huge backpack you're going to have to be very fit um, that's the first thing. And the second thing, be ready to witness God's creation in its most beautiful form, uh, where you get to see the South African coastline in all its splendor, mountains, rivers, the seashore, the crashing waves, the jungle, sort of kind of jungle uh, that you walk through. Um, so really very beautiful. And again, we thank and praise God for the opportunity to have uh, been uh, you know, able to do the Otter Trail. So Alhamdulillah, it was excellent. I did uh, try and catch up uh, a bit from uh, what was what transpired last week between our brothers Anwar and Molana Zakaria. So um, yeah, I'm sure all of you listeners uh, have been watching us and have been keen to to hear about tonight's topic. But let's first check in with uh, Molana Zakaria, and then thereafter Sidi Anwar who will then lead us into our topic for this week. Alhamdulillah. Um, I envy your Thanks journey. Inshallah. I hope to do it one day, inshallah, if Allah comes to me, if the opportunity. Um, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. Uh, no complaints. Had an interesting week. I traveled uh, to visit some family members, but Alhamdulillah, uh, it has been so far. Allah has been uh, great to us. Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> MashaAllah. Awesome. Sidi Anwar. Uh, I'm good. Thanks. Uh, had a very good week. That's um, an interesting thing since you were talking about being out and about, you know, on the Otter Trail. Um, yeah, I'm also hoping to do it sometime in the future. Um, May Allah grant you both that opportunity. Amen. So, uh, I'm, I'm inshallah. Um, yeah, so in a nutshell, I mean, you know, last week's uh, discussion and your experiences and, you know, we had a, ch a, ch a chance to catch up with you, uh, you know, about the Otter Trail and you showed me some of the pictures, um, you know, I mean, stunning natural beauty and what an experience as well. Uh, uh, also, you know, as we, we had a uh, fiqhi discussion afterwards about how fiqh, when you're out there uh, in a natural environment, um, you have to adapt and how you can put it through the life also has to be very, 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 very practical. And I think uh, that's about real life, as real as it gets. Uh, so that was a interesting thing. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, just whilst we're on that topic, I think it's a, it's a good one to, to, to delve into one around, you know, uh, maintaining one's purity, particularly because we need our purity to pray. It's a precondition uh, for a believer to have a certain level of cleanliness prior to prayer. So um, that said, you know, whilst you're out there uh, breaking a sweat and really getting all sweaty and, you know, have to, having to use uh, the natural elements uh, to, to basically relieve oneself in and so forth. Um, and then also finding yourself sometimes in, in, in tough situations where you need to uh, perhaps perform ablution and, um, you know, you've got all this gear on what sort of leeways are there in the jurisprudence that makes it easier. So we are not going to get into the detail of it, but for example, you know, doing masa, which is the wiping over uh, the boots comes into play. And other instances, 
you know, the minimum water required just to do uh, an, uh, uh, just to clean yourself from from either, you know, urine or stool, for example. Um, sometimes we get whilst we are at home, it's easy because we've got a lot of amenities at our disposal. Um, we've got a lot of comforts at our disposal, including hot water, which there is none on the Otter Trail, by the way, um, as well as no electricity. So all of those elements come into play. And then, of course, the, the, the other one would be constantly navigating yourself and trying to find the Qibla, which is the direction mm. towards uh, Mecca, um, in order to pray. You know, I, I, I somehow got my, my bearings wrong at one point and I was actually facing in the opposite direction only for my cousin to join me later. And I said to him, no, this is the right way. And he's like, no, dude, how can it be? That's east and this is west and whatever, the, where the sun rises and so forth. And then I had to repeat that prayer. So um, because I then became, uh, it was made known to me. So, yeah, I think it, it really a host of jurisprudence, uh, I would say a fiqhi issues do come into play. Uh, more so because you're out in the elements. So yeah, thank you for raising that. And I think it's really something to share and for people to keep in mind when they are out in the natural world. And uh, before we get into tonight's uh, topic, but I mean, like just put it out, you know, what happens while that's in the natural world when you need to be on the go, let's say in your normal day-to-day -day environment, you know, things need to get done. Uh, but you can't also basically uh, labor uh, over jurisprudential issues. You literally need a can-do attitude and you need to be able to be adaptable. Exactly, um, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and that's, uh, that's what... Yeah. So that's an interesting observation. No, sure. And I mean, exactly, whether it be, you know, between meetings at works and, and, and I mean, we can talk about this because having, having been in that environment, sometimes you need to delay dhuhr to its last moment so that you can then pray dhuhr, wait a few minutes, pray salatul asr, and then go back into your meeting. Sometimes it's about, you know, breaking your fast and literally just praying without even doing idhan, adhan and iqama, for example, because you need to get back to a pitch presentation, which I have done on multiple occasions. Uh, sometimes it's breaking fast in 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 a meeting um that has happened to me too so i think you know uh, we constantly need to be aware of 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 our jurisprudence whether it be on at work whether it be even sometimes whilst we're out in the sports fields wherever the case may be whatever the case may be uh, these things do come up um and it's important in fact that's what adds to the vibrancy i think and we can tie this in also mm. to tonight's discussion i'm not going to segue into it i'll allow you to do that but it definitely has got that it's got a, it's got it's connected to our topic. So maybe you want to outline the topic and then we can get into it. Anwar. OK, sure. Thanks. So tonight's uh, discussion, we're looking at uh, loving with purpose. Um, the topic itself, I mean, when we always ask people, what what is your purpose of life or what is your purpose in life? Right. Um, it's very easy to say, you know, um, as Muslims, we're going to say that, let's say the purpose of life is basically to worship God. Right. Because uh, the Quran even says that, uh, like Allah says, um, I have not created man and jinn uh, except for my worship. Now, uh, I mean, that's the broader, uh, the, the, high, the highest objective and the fundamental objective of life itself. But when you break that objective down into manageable, tangible, uh, achievable goals, that's really our discussion about tonight is that what is, what, or what constitutes uh, a life of purpose? Tonight, as we're going to unpack this topic, there's a few things we can look at. Um, when I looked at, you know, uh, uh, there was a particular paper that I like to always draw on when discussing this here. It's called Loving Islam with Purpose uh, by right. Dr. Omar Farooq Abdullah. And I'll put that in the further readings where he talks about to love a life of purpose or to love Islam is a way of life purposefully. Then you need to trust reason. You need to be able to respect dissent. What is dissent? Differences of opinion. You need to stress social obligations, set priorities for yourself, for your family. Uh, as a community, we need to be able to do that. And then we need to be able to embrace legal maxims or legal principles. Uh, kind of like what you spoke about, like the fit, uh, but more like these legal maxims or principles are more like, uh, let's say, um, kind of like guiding principles that allows us to engage a whole range of situations uh, beyond just uh, ritual purity and how to pray and what to eat, uh, but it all is it all revolves around this idea of loving loving a life of worship purposefully. So um, that's what we'll be getting into tonight. 
Sure. Good to see you again. Your camera was off there for a while, so you yeah. may just want to look oh, into that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, back you back. We we got uh, sound and no picture, so nevertheless we got the idea. Um, so <laughs> I just thought I'd bring that up. But for me, um, oh, sorry about you know, that. I I know uh, Malana Zakaria may want to come in, but the, the points that, that 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 we we sort of mulled over when thinking about this particular um, subject matter. Um, and for me, you know. It, it does come back to that verse of the Holy Quran, which is sort of seminal in that sense that, um, you know, you have been created uh, for no other purpose except to worship God. And in worshiping God, it is recognizing God's power. And in fact, I saw something quite nice just to talk about that for a second is that a lot of people pray with the heart of this world when in fact we should be praying with a heart for the year after or with a heart that is with God. So a lot mm -hmm. of the time we pray, you know, seeking worldly uh, needs and worldly, uh, you know, fulfillment, when in fact, um, that is not always, you know, the express purpose of, of why we pray. In fact, a, higher, a heightened level of, of, of prayer is, in fact, when you pray with a godly heart, you know, one that's really just in seeking the divine. So, um, of course, it's not easy. You know, a lot of us, we see comfort in the fact that we have a, an, an outlet where we can, we can pray and we can ask for our worldly matters. And that's where we get our provisions from, definitely from, from Allah, the Most High. So uh, it's just another way of, of looking at, at, at really the essence of, of prayer and as we, we grow and may we all grow on that path. For me, a life of purpose definitely is a life with goals and objectives, a life that is uh, geared towards a productive outcome. Um, and I was speaking to another friend of mine and I said, you know, it, 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 in reference to people, so in terms of how do you live a life of purpose in, left, in reference to the seeking of your provisions, i.e. your income, um, a lot of the time we, we, we think about what the obligations of the employer is over us, that he must pay or she must pay us on time and that they must give mm -hmm. us breaks on time and that we must have everything that we need to do our jobs but then we forget about our responsibility. So we then come to work. The only purpose we seek in, in work is the fulfillment of our rights, but we forget about the rights that we need to fulfill. So I think when we talk about life, what is the purpose of life? We need to think about what is it that we need to do in life to fulfill that purpose rather than what do we want to get out of life is what do we do to get what we want out of life? Mashallah. Um... You know, I, when I was looking at this, um, uh, the, these, um, you know, just living uh, with purpose, there's something which I found quite interesting. And this was, in fact, you wouldn't believe it, reading um, uh, animals in the Quran. And I came across um, the Sarah clearly what she did was uh, she brought about four scholars of Tafsir. And in there, she brought Imam Qurtubi. And he mentioned, so, so what happened is she brought all the privileges, uh, which, which, which sometimes uh, scholars try to show the superiority of, of human beings to, to nature. And so she brought all of those verses which could, uh, you know, uh, uh, show that humans are superior. So for example, like trust, language, senses, all of that stuff. And Imam Qurtubi, so she brought Imam Qurtubi to show some of the uh, attributes that he brought, which could show that human beings are superior. And one of the things that he brought was reason. And through reason, he mentions that through reason, one gets to know God. So your rational faculties. And, and I found this is so important because um, when we don't have a reason, um, uh, the, the world, it, 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 there's no purpose. Uh, it, 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 even in your prayer, if your prayer doesn't have a, a, a reason behind it and a rational understanding of, of who you're standing in front of, why, what's your reason for going to the mosque? Uh, what's your reason for performing ablution? You know, what's your reason for entering into the mosque? So. When you have all of these reasons and you get to the most important is to have these reasons and then understand your reasons. And through that, a person will then finally get to know what is he worshiping, um, what are the reasons for these uh, uh, worships, 
uh, why am I doing this here? So I found that in this, that we're speaking of a godly uh, um, heart and uh, reason is also very important. And, and another aspect that I wanted to add to this reason is, 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 is mindfulness. You know, like when you look at prophetic mindfulness of, 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 of the prophet, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the prophet Muhammad uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his whole life was mindfulness of whatever he was doing at every juncture. I mean, when he woke up in the morning, he would read. Uh, thinking for another day. Um, when he, if, if he would go to, 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 to the bathroom, there was a prayer. Coming out, there was a prayer. Uh, mm -hmm. Wearing clothes, there was a prayer. Going towards the mosque, there's a prayer. Entering mm -hmm. the mosque, there's a prayer. Uh, you know, go, going to the bazaar, there's a prayer. Buying new clothes, there's a prayer. Looking into the mirror. So there's never a moment where the, where, 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 where the prophet is not mindful of what he's doing. And I think so this mm -hmm. contribute to our life and our, uh, our purpose of, 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 of life. I don't know what you all- But uh, uh, Sheikh Zakaria, mm -hmm. if I may add there, right? You mentioned about the Prophet uh, constantly Salam being Allah. in a state of, like, uh, of prayer, but what, whatever he's doing, right? Um, entering, leaving the home, leaving the mosque, uh, changing, eating. And we as uh, believers, we have these, uh, basically these, these uh, eyes, right? Constantly. And we, we taught to them, uh, we, we taught them as kids, right? Uh, when you go to basic, whether you are in a Muslim school or you are attending uh, madrasa classes after, you know, uh, school itself, right? Um, you would be memorizing these du'as and at home, you know, at, uh, your, your parents will ask you to recite them, especially when you're small and dust in grand period. And kids are reading, like, you know, they do ask before eating, or they can recite Surah Fatiha. It's very nice. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's nice and it's necessary, right? Nice and necessary. But, you know, uh, you spoke about mindfulness. It also, we also have to be mindful that when we're reciting this, it's about the, having a conversation with God, you know? So, you know, being mindful about that there is, there is this higher being that has created everything um, that is promising you the real life after this life, right? right? Um, the constant plans that you're making throughout your day and even when each your prayer, like Sola, right? Um, that you're actually having a conversation uh, with God because uh, Allah himself says that he responds to the call of everyone who calls on, uh, on him, um, yeah. on, on to him. So, uh, it's not a one-sided uh, conversation, uh, yeah, and we need to rem uh, to remember that. Correct. Basically, being in a state of presence and being aware—that's what you're trying to to to, mm. to, 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 get to you know? Basically, yeah. But but what I'm saying is that it's not just about you know, uh, kind of like uh, just like robotically reciting these different mm. uh, du'as. It's about really like into it. Uh, in yes. a way that you are existing in the world, you're doing what needs to be done, you're weaving your mm. way through traffic, uh, you engage in your colleagues at work, you engage in uh, your teachers and your uh, your classmates, wherever you're studying, uh, you know, on the soccer field, you're giving it your all. When you're lifting in the gym, you're lifting it, you know, with everything that you've got. Mm. Uh, but at mm. the same time is that it's a mind and a heart that's basically constantly in, in, in contact and, commun let's say, communication. Uh, with with uh, with God Himself, um, right. and that's that's not a robotic relationship. It's not just ritualistic relationship. It's like you point out, it's a mindful relationship. Yeah, yeah. Because I because I found this yes, I feel it it. To be very interesting that the rational order of the universe makes it accessible to human reason and transforms it from a world of random phenomena, you know, random happening, into a marvelous sign of of, of, of God's creation and recognition, you know, so, yeah. so, so that, that's what we're trying to say, you know, so when you're mindful and when you're present, uh, it brings life to your activities and, and what you're doing. And I believe that that reason gives purpose to, 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 to your life yeah. and it, 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 it motivates you to, 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 it opens up other doors of, of, of understanding and, 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 you know, reaching your destination. Uh, yeah. 
and, and in fact, on, on, on that point, Bolana Zakaria, it's, it's, you know, we're constantly asking ourselves, what is our purpose? And what is my purpose? And I tell my child, do you understand what is your purpose? And sometimes it's, it's, it's easiest understood when you actually ask yourself, what is the purpose of the celestial bodies that we see around us? You know, mm. it's as simple as that. He's saying, mm. does the sun have a purpose or is it something that's just so arbitrary? You know, it's just there. It's just to give us heat. Mm. It comes up and it goes away. You know, what is the purpose of the sun? What is the purpose of water? What is the purpose of uh, the moon, the stars? What are, what's the purpose of trees? When we understand that these things, these celestial bodies and the elements in nature, they have a specific purpose if they do not fulfill or if it was not created for that purpose and they were created without the ability to fulfill that purpose, then there would be something lacking elsewhere in the universe, elsewhere in the cosmos. So that's why almost to bring that, that's almost a society on its own. You know, it's a community on its own. They bring it to the individual and say, does the individual understand what is it his is. purpose it or is. her purpose? And how are they then fulfilling that purpose? How are you getting firstly to explore? And I think we need to touch on this point is, how do I develop an understanding from something that is, so from, from nothing to something tangible, uh, how do I understand what is my purpose? So maybe we can go into that a bit also. Um, and, and I think that is, it's worth discussing, but just quickly, just to add that then once the individual is then understanding his or her purpose, fulfilling that, then the community benefits then the community and the society is able to achieve its purpose um, and, and governments are able to achieve their purpose because this is exactly what I was trying to link up in, in the discussion we were having was that when we talk about a, um, an, an employer working for an em employee, working for an employer, if either of the two understand their purpose and are fulfilling their roles and objectives, then the, the, the company is able to de deliver to society. Society is able to deliver, you know, in terms of, 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 of setting up governments that look at the best interests of people and the world as an entire cosmos then, you know, sort of tries to achieve some sort of balance. But maybe, I don't know, do you want to, guys want to get into but that on, discussion is, how do I understand my purpose? How do I know where, where do I find my purpose? Well, well, that would be basically wanna, like, yeah, this idea of uh, trust in reason, of mm -hmm. trust in reason, right? Because, look, we're talking about purpose. I mean, you can only really know your purpose is if there is some type of, like, let's say, it's a reproduction. Like, you know, the neurons are firing, right? So um, is that you go with? Uh, and that, that's basically goal setting, milestone achieving uh, type of thinking. Uh, and, and that's very, very necessary. I mean, ultimately, uh, I mean, if you really want to think of it, uh, Sun Tzu, who wrote The Art of War, you know, he, also, he said very smartly that but, uh, all human interaction is conflict, right? So even the employee, employee, uh, employee employer relationship it's a type of conflict right mm. um, not all conflict is bad conflict can sometimes can actually be good i'm not talking about you know physical wars where people are shooting each other and killing mm. each other no mm. no that's obviously uh, something not good and it should be avoided but almost if every interaction is some type of a conflict but you can have a win win situation when you apply uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, right, where both sides win. And that happens when there's this idea that I have uh, rights, but I also have obligations, responsibilities. And the other side also is that I have rights, but I also have obligations, responsibilities, the use, uh, the, the, the use of reason. And, you know, you find with the, the use of reason, you find a reasonable uh, solution uh, to a relationship and uh, to whatever it is you, 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 you're dealing with and working on. And, you know, unfortunately right now, right, it seems like when people talk about uh, reason or uh, let's say uh, rationale or even logic, right, or intellect, uh, when it comes to the Islamic discourse, and it must be said right now, it's a little bit toxic in, in our part of the country, uh, in our part of the world rather, uh, because, you know, we can't apply reason uh, or people are refusing uh, to apply reason uh, as soon as one starts to you know think about uh, the, the faith in a, a re, uh, let's say a logical manner it's almost as if oh no people want to accuse you of uh, denying the quran in the sunnah people want to accuse you of having a rebellious spirit or rebellious attitude uh, or that you are trying to change uh, the precepts of religion uh, and those are just all you know accusations but there isn't the sense of like you know 
people are applying their minds and their hearts to uh, find out how do they live, you know, truthfully in this world in a way mm. that's uh, positive and proactive uh, and allows one to fulfill their responsibilities on earth while achieving the goals of the year after mm. uh, and achieving the, the object, uh, the, the goals of this life. It's not a way of life or a way of being, uh, as one of our teachers said. It's, it's not just, you know, that the world is, it, it, it is not, not at all, a system that says the world is bad and, uh, you know, we need to be afraid of it. No, it embraces the world completely. And you can only really do that if you're curious enough to go out in the world and start looking, you know, observing, uh, observing things in nature, in, in even urban cities, within yourself, in human interactions. And it's all based mm -hmm. on reason. You'll use the revelation of the Quran and the, 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 the Sunnah of the Prophet mm -hmm. right, is the bedrock to which through, uh, let's say, the, fil the filter. And you'll basically filter all your experiences and even your, your rational thoughts and logic through that filter. But you, mm -hmm. will, but you will filter it uh, and you yeah. will experience it. And that will allow us to be able to engage all of life's problems in a very reasonable way, pandemics mm -hmm. included. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, uh, another thing, I I was looking at the, the documentary of Muhammad Ali, um, and uh, oh, it flowed like a butterfly, sting like a bee. What what okay. really what really one of the guys from the, <laughs> uh, uh, one of the speakers mentioned something very interesting, and they said that he got his voice and his purpose when he joined the company of like Malcolm X, and when he started because. He would keep a lot of company with, with, with Malcolm X. And um, obviously, at that time, they had the Nation of Islam. And, but uh, really, the discussions that they were having, so they built for him an environment. Because one of the questions that they asked one of the uh, interview, uh, people they were interviewing was that, would he have, would he have been so vocal and, 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 and such an activist and, and speaking out against oppression and that who, who would he have been? I, I think so they were asking his brother, uh, Rahman uh, Ali. And, and, and he said that he, he doesn't think, or he said, no, he wouldn't have been had he not keep the company of, 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 of Malcolm X and uh, you know discussed with him certain things and that made him understand and, and, and that's when he started speaking out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, we also need to firstly um, understand our strengths. You need to understand your own strength. You need to, and, and, and that is why one of the stresses of one of the uh, scholars of Tafsir by the name of Fakhruddin uh, al-Razi mentions that uh, uh, your signs, uh, you, you need to understand yourself. You need to look into yourself and, and, and look at your strengths. And then when you see your strengths, you need to associate those strengths and visions with people who have similar visions and, and, and purposes. Mm. Yeah, understand. It's no use you have <laughs> strengths, you know, and, and, and visions, but now you 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 befriending somebody who sleeps the whole day, wakes up two o'clock, just has fun, yeah. relaxes, plays PlayStation, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, so 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 your your visions and your strengths need to then look for people who have those similar visions and, and, and strengths, or even if it's different uh, strengths, but all of you will have one vision to 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 really change um, the community or better the community. And I think so. Once you have that, we can just use the example of Muhammad Ali. You know, he he had these guys who backed him up gave him the ideologies and uh, he became known around the world. He made a massive change. Many people, uh, you know, uh, um, um, many people admired the change that he made and he changed also a lot of, 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 of situations, um, uh, you know. Uh, so, so I think so that is something which, which, which we, should, we should really take into consideration, mm -hmm. which is that firstly, understand your own strengths and your visions, and then get, uh, you know, close to associate with people that are on that same road, and it will just make it easier. Mm. Uh, God will. Mm.
Yeah, I think, you know, as you were talking about that and you're talking about strengths, I think for me, what came to my mind is um, automatically is, is what is the opposite of that? So, so what is the opposite of not leave, leading a life of purpose? Um, so a lot of us, were, like you were talking about, you know, whether it's games, whether it's sitting on the internet and, you know, abusing your, your time on the internet rather than using it beneficially. I think for me, when, when we look at people that don't lead their, or, or, or so, you know, seemingly are not leaving, leading their lives with purpose, it's people who get up with no objectives for the day, people who have no routine. Sometimes routines, you know, as my, I'm sure there's some, some psychology behind it, that routines does at least give you a level of comfort that you can achieve the, the important things in life every day. I know when to eat. I know what I'm eating for breakfast. I don't need to think about it, you know. Uh, I, I saw something the other day. It said that uh, uh, if only we knew when we got married that the biggest question that we will ever have to answer every day is what am I going to cook for dinner? You know, <laughs> what are we going to make for dinner? Like every day couples are asking themselves, what are they going to make for dinner? So I think, you know, not leading a life of purpose to me is, is, is someone, as you say, doesn't understand their strengths. A person who gets up every day with no plan, at least no level of routine, uh, at least a minimum level of routine, who uh, who's not even, even if you don't have a level, level of routine, you're not someone that goes out there that wants to experience things in the world. You know, you want to in, you want to engage the world. You want to get new experiences. Um, someone said to me the other day when we're talking about the otter trail that one of the persons, one of the people he met when he went on on the otter trail, and what was so cool was he found a gentleman that just joined their group, and this guy goes across the world all over, and he just does these kind of things. So that's his purpose of his life is to go and have great experiences. At the same time, when one person was about to drown, he was the only person who was an excellent swimmer. He knew how to administer CPR and stuff like that. So he was not just this hippie, you know, flying around the world, just going to get cool experiences, dude. Not kind of, he had skills, you know. So I, I, I'm just linking that, that, that having a purpose means you someone you know what you want to achieve, you have skills, you have a vision, you, um, you, you know what you want to get out of each day, you know what you want to get out of each night, you know where you're going to, you know. Um, so I think that, I, I, mean, I mean, these are broad strokes, it's not, we're not getting into specifics, but definitely just trying to create an impetus that, you know, what, what does it really mean to, to lead a life of purpose? All right. Look, I mean, when, when, when we always engage in this topic, right, and I think we need to say this, we as believers, Muslims, we're going to talk about it in relation to this way of life that we follow, right? But there are other people out there who are not Muslims, who are also living very, very purposeful lives, right? Mm -hmm. They're and doing very purposeful and productive stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and let's face it, right? In the last maybe, I don't know what, 50 years or, or, or less or even more, right? A lot of uh, uh, literature that talks about personal productivity, personal life management, uh, all of that, right, has not necessarily been produced by, by Muslims, right, uh, by and large, mm -hmm. right? Uh, famous writers that are known across the entire world, like uh, Stephen Covey. He, he's passed on now, uh, but uh, he's the foundation that he set up still continues. I mean, his, his son is also quite a prolific writer, uh, Sean Covey, right? People like that, they uh, also Dale Carnegie and... and um, They've basically uh, set the pace and produced massive amounts uh, of, of, of material talking about purposeful loving. And other people, uh, Muslims and non-Muslims, have embraced uh, you know, their writings, their teachings, and um, have gone on to do amazing and great things, right? Um, but when we frame in this discussion, we are, uh, and I always come, uh, you know, come back to this point, uh, you guys will know this here, is that when we're looking at Islam, we don't look at it through through the lens of religion, you know, in a Western secular sense, something I do in the mosque, or, you know, in my private time, you know, then it's just me and God uh, at that time. No, mindfulness of, of Muhammad Sallallahu is that we are, yes. our hearts are with uh, Allah at all uh, uh, times. So it's a way of life. It's a way of being. It's an entire civilization uh, as well. So that's why we're not afraid of the world and we're not afraid of, of other you know, systems of knowledge, we constantly were willing to, uh, to engage it, to embrace it. That gives mm -hmm. you an opportunity to live a very dynamic life. You know, yes, you will have challenges, 
uh, vulnerabilities. I think that, that everyone faces those kind of things. But as a community, as a society, as a larger civilization, you're quite uh, gutsy like that. You know, uh, fear is natural. And people that say that, you know, when you're small, when you when you're younger and smaller, um, you like no, I, I'm not scared. I don't have no fears, right? Rubbish. Everybody has their fears. It's about facing those fears that actually make you gutsy. You know, that allows you to actually uh, to uh, uh, some uh, surmount uh, uh, both the, the 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 challenges that you face. Um, because people that are actually fearless might actually have psychological issues. You know, that means to say mm -hmm. that they might you know, have no regard for their own safety. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's why we use reason. Uh, that's why we use reason mm -hmm. and we stress communal obligations. Uh, the pandemic has taught us something is that human beings are social beings. The technology that, that we're having, even the stuff that we're using tonight, um, we use in all of this is something that we, so we can remain in contact with other human beings. You, you're part of a society. You can't live a life that's selfish. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it does not make sense to do so. And I think we need to get out of the scarcity mentality uh, as a society and embrace the abundance mentality uh, as a society. And that allows for uh, personal and communal uh, progress on a wide yeah. scale. Yeah, and, 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 and you, you make a good point because as you were saying that and as we were speaking early on, I thought about when you were saying that people need to have a strategy, you need to have a purpose. Most, you know, a, a lot of people do have them. Um, and, and sometimes it's noble and sometimes it's not noble. I think the word is ignoble, right? Is it? Um, yeah. Like companies, companies have an express purpose to make profit. And they will go to uh, many companies in the capitalist system will go to extreme lengths to, uh, you know, take rights and, 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 and obligate uh, rights away from others in order to make profits. So that's when, of course, it's now negative. This is now, mm. you know, a negative strategy that, that is going to harm society. And in fact, is going to kill the purpose of another person. Rather, it's each mm. and every one of us trying to achieve a noble purpose. It could be about leading a good life. It could be about helping others. It could be about being the best in your field or trying to be the best at what you do. It could be about being honest, moral, upright, et cetera, et cetera. And in so doing, you're going to also then create uh, the knock on effect will be that it creates, you know, other people that are like minded. And then you're going to, of course, as Molana Zakaria was saying in the beginning, when you are like that, you don't want to hang around with people that are not like that. It's very rare that you'll find a very noble person have a very, you know, um, let's say someone who's going down, you know, the wrong path and, and really keeping that person as a close bosom friend. Of course, you, you, we're not saying that those people should be neglected. Definitely not. In fact, the purpose of life would say that then our purpose is to call those that are going astray to the right path or help the one that is vulnerable, help the one who's at the you know uh, cusp of perhaps maybe even taking their lives. It's something that we also spoke about in terms of you know society, uh, suicide, sorry. Because just going now there, some people will say that I've reached the end of my purpose of my life. Therefore, I want to take my life, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and they need to be, you know, that's another discussion. I don't know if you want to even get into that. Is that how do you then open up, uh, you know, a, a different vista for that person to say, in fact, hold up before you're thinking like that and you're about to do something. Let me tell you really how I can help you understand a greater purpose that is at play here and that you can still love for it. Mm -hmm. On, on that, you know, you, you may you, uh, use the example of, of companies, right? Um, mm -hmm. What I find uh, very, you know, it, it always makes me do a dull. When we always talk about co corporate, uh, uh, you know, corporate uh, uh, companies, right? It's almost as if there is kind of like there always has to be this contradiction or this dichotomy, right? Uh, between, let's say, noble moral uh, principles, a certain set of ethics, right? And money being on the other side and totally opposed to it. So it's like, you know, there's always this mm -hmm. clash, right? Um, and I don't see that necessarily being the case uh, within Islam. Firstly, right? Uh, why? Because look, at the end of the day, we all need money to survive, right? We all need money to thrive. It's a fact of life, right? Uh, it's not the tool that's the problem. It's the person using the tool. So 
if you have if you are a moral businessman or if you are a morally uh, upright uh, white collar professional right working in whatever industry um irrespective of how much money you make you are going to use it correctly right mm-hmm. um and businesses that us uh, that you know where basically that are set up with the express intention yes everyone goes into business to make money right everybody wants to live a life of dignity and comfort everybody wants to travel nothing wrong with those things when the muslim basically will look at like let's say the idea of money uh, we look at it in in such multi dimensional ways that it's not just about you know uh, let's say uh, personal enrichment nothing wrong in in making a lot of money but there's also communal obligations attached uh, to that money uh, there's family responsibilities that are attached to it um, so when one person arrives it has a knock on effect in the rest of society when a person is properly uh, islamically conscientized they are one they're going to create employment right uh, if the industry allows them to do that because we know we move into more uh, let's say seamless industries more flatter uh, type mm. of uh, uh, corporations uh, machines are replacing uh, the majority of us but also it's going to create employment it's going to be environmentally friendly or environmentally progressive right mm. um, it's going to be able to take those morally correct political stances uh, and it's it's going to uh, gen- should be able to generate uh, let's say enough profit and revenues that everybody that's associated with the company benefits uh, mm-hmm. so there shouldn't be this dichotomy uh, and i think as a society as a community we need to get get it out of our heads that if a person uh, is pursuing wealth right that they are evil that they that they have no concern about the next life mm. uh, that they too engrossed in this world that's not necessarily true yeah. uh, you have this amazing example of the prophet sallallahu's chief companion Allah Abu Bakr as-Siddiq uh, may Allah be pleased with him uh, i mean he was an extremely successful businessman but he literally gave his entire life and, and everything that he owned in the cause of mm. islam uh, yeah. and there is no one east or west that can say you know what Abu Bakr uh, was obsessed with this life and Abu Bakr has no place in the year after it would be ridiculous mm. to say some such yeah. a thing but was he was mm. was he fabulously wealthy definitely yeah mm. but as a community i feel that we need to set priorities and this is maybe a failure uh within our community right now Uh, and i think part of the problem is that communities we don't have any more uh, let's say like the practice of town hall meetings uh, mm. you know or even neighborhood block meetings where we just come we sit and discuss what's going on in our community and what kind of neighborhood that we want to live in mm. um, you guys are all familiar with neil postman his very famous book Am- amusing ourselves to death right so yes. in there you're going to see some interesting speeches you know by abraham lincoln and you know other american politicians in the 1800s and that right uh, where basically you would have a very very strong uh, public discourse uh, where people would come to, to say the town hall to listen to a lecture not necessarily always a, a, a religious lecture just a discourse about what's happening in the world what's happening to the country what's happening to the community so they were actually a very highly informed a uh, uh, group of people in different parts of the world right mm. so if we want to uh, let's say uh, stress communal obligations and set priorities as individuals as families and communities it boils down to communication it's easy to set uh, priorities you know in your individual ca- capacity right for your personal self it should be right but you start thinking what do you want to do with your life at which stages and working towards that and put in your trust in god and inshallah you will achieve it right uh, mm-hmm. but we don't necessarily do that as communities and i think that we are reaching a point right now right while we have to be covid safe covid conscious is that we need to resort back to like let's say the idea of actually having serious discussions in our community and community events that actually create a sense of community mm-hmm. um, i think i think we seriously missing that there are kids growing up in our neighborhoods you know of the same age group uh, you know they don't even know each other right yeah. and with the pandemic it's been made worse um, yeah. we talk you know we've previously 
we've talked about networking and mentoring and, and things like that there. And uh, you're not necessarily going to get that, uh, uh, let's say, if you don't actually communicate with other human beings. And, and I think yeah. that to set priorities as a community, let's start talking to each other again about serious things. Yeah, and enjoy ourselves point. as well. Um, you know, there's, there's two um, interesting uh, things I came across um, when we're speaking of this uh, communal obligation or societal obligation. And I read a very interesting uh, part in, 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 in Umar, uh, Dr. Umar Farooq's uh, paper. And he mentioned one thing where he, because I'm just looking at how he dissected the meaning of uniformity and unity and how it has changed in today's time. Because also uh, the communal obligations is that if we look in the past, let's say, for example, we take in the traditional Islamic societies, um, they didn't promote uniformity, but, but they promoted unity and diversity and uh, they didn't impose any type of uniformity. Uh, so, so obviously uniformity is almost like, you know, this is the consistent way. There's no other views. There's no other way. Um, mm. and, and, uh, I'm, I'm not going to tolerate your view. There's no open-mindedness. There's no tolerance. Mm. And I find that in today's time, we've, instead of unity, there is uniformity. Uh, mm. And I'm just speaking of in religious matters and, and yeah. also which the community and the society is involved in. And it, it brings about so much of weakness and so much of, 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 of uh, you know, uh, breaking up the community into smaller uh, uh, sects and, 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 and followings, you know, um, and, and, and everybody, you know, it loses the direction of, <laughs> of, of what we want to uh, reach. So I think so that is also one aspect which needs to be looked into, uh, you know. Mm. Uh, but I agree. Know. I agree with you. Unity, right? But uh, like we said, like you know, like let's say respecting dissent, respecting differences of of opinion, and you know, unity is not uh, conformity. We we keep saying that, uh, and I think you framed it very very nicely. Um, but unfortunately, worth communal uh, discussions right now, and I'm, and I'm going to say this: they can be very toxic because sometimes our interpretation of many things, right, is too narrow. So, you know, we're not studious enough, we're not scholarly enough, intellectually curious enough, internet enough to admit that there may be more than one way, to admit that we could be wrong, to admit that we don't know it all, that uh, other people have a valid viewpoint. Um, Correct. We don't have that, ki that kind of, of, of intellectual humility uh, and intellectual curio curiosity. So, yeah. you know, differences of opinion are not respected. And, you know, I, I, my last comment I made was about uh, let's have town hall meetings again and let's uh, set priorities as a community and let's stress those communal obligations by communicating with each other. If we are not actually going to communicate with each other, right, um, doing the practical business of talking to each other, talking out issues, you know, set down, let's say, rules for engagement on how we are going to talk to each other, right, and then actually start ha having serious discussions it's always going to be a case of that when anybody expresses a view that's different from ours, um, we're going to shut them down. We're going to label them. We're going to ostracize them. Uh, you know, try to sweep them and their views under the carpet um, and preach, you know, unity, which really says, you know what, conform, conform to our way, and then mm -hmm. we'll embrace you. You know, um, and, and, and it doesn't work like that. Gentlemen, 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 as the designated driver for this evening, we're going to have to leave the discussion there. We've come up to our time slot, our time limit, and we've reached our destination. So um, maybe perhaps we can uh, take the, some bits and pieces of this into the next one and then try and round it off then. I'm so sorry to have uh, pulled the handbrake on you all. Um, as the designated driver, I'll have the last word and say, in re-evaluating the purpose of our own lives, we must know that um, there is a re-evaluation of the purpose of many other things that are ongoing at the moment. People are asking about the purpose of education in its current structure. People are asking uh, about the purpose of governments in their current structure. People are asking about democracy. Um, so- Can you just uh, straighten your camera? 
Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. <clears throat> okay, I'll leave it like that now. Um, I was just, yeah, you got what I was saying. So I think we, we can ask as much as we're asking ourselves as humans about what is our purpose and leading a life of purpose, we must ask what is happening around us and what's the purpose of what's happening around us? What is the purpose of social media? What is the purpose of the way the, the trajectory of entertainment is going and so forth? And then hopefully we can find out that in there, does our purpose lie in being part of that or not? So we leave it at that, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Uh, Molana Zakaria, uh, Siri Anwar Jatam. It was an awesome discussion. And um, we will catch up again next week. To all our listeners, thank you so much. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, when you listen to this, give us a thumbs up and please do leave a comment also. Uh, we thank you for being a part of this and we hope that we'll see you again soon. Uh, God willing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.